Hey everyone, thank you for staying for my talk. My name is Nir Kaufman. I work at 500 Tech. I also have a Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't funny. At 500 Tech, we help companies who need help to build web mobile and blockchain applications. Talk with us, check our website, we're doing some cool things. Uh, but today is a very important day, it's a very sad day. Who know which day is today? No one? All right, this day we remember, this is the VS Code Support Group Day. Uh, so today I'm going to use VS Code instead of WebStorm. Who using VS Code? I know, I'm gonna try anyway. Uh, portal, this is the, the definition of portal by Wikipedia, which is the source of all truth. So a portal is a doorway that connects two distant locations. I'm living in New Jersey. Anyone else live in New Jersey? Yeah. So we know uh, one or two things about connecting two distant locations, all right? Like this tunnel that connects us from here to there. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about React portals, all right? So this is the definition of uh, React portals. And when I see those kinds of definitions, I'm just trying to uh, highlight the important stuff. So the formal definition is it uh, enables us to render uh, children into a DOM node that exists outside of the hierarchy. Make sense? Who use React portals? All right, cool. Great audience. So. This is the actual uh, uh, function from uh, React DOM. Uh, create portal, it accepts a child, which can be any renderable React child, a string, a component, JSX, whatever, and a DOM element. Straightforward. So let's try to do uh, uh, some live coding and check it out. Who wants to see some live coding? Woo! Yeah, woo! Yeah, all right. So for this live coding, uh, let's do a thing from my favorite movie, The Horse and the City. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> don't do it again, please. <laughs> Very famous movie. So if we're going uh, to talk about horses and cities, uh, the first thing that we need is a city. So I'm going to create a div right here. Uh, the class name will be uh, city. You're going to put some stuff in there, like horses. And um, yeah. And um, let's do this. All right. Back to the browser, and we've got a city. This is not a Visual Studio Code feature, right? <laughs> Just uh, don't write it on. All right, uh, inside the city, we need to have a horse, of course. So I'm going to create another div. Uh, the class will be a horse. All right, so if we take a look at the horse CSS, we can see that I'm using position absolute because I want to render this horse always. Uh, um, on the right bottom of my screen, and I want it to be <coughs> relative to the window. And everything works as, as expected uh, until someone doing something like this, position relative on the city. So now what we're going to get is the horse is relative to our city, which is not what I'm expecting to see. If we take a look at uh, the element, at the DevTools, it makes sense. We've got our application container, and we've got the city, and inside of the city, we've got the horse, all right? Cool. So, React portals. How we can use React portals to solve this problem? It's not a real problem, but it's uh, something that else that I'm expecting to see. So, I'm gonna back, go to my index.html and create another div, this container div. Back to FGS. Back to FGS. Now, I can use the portal feature. I'm going to call React DOM, create portal, create portal except something that React can render, like this JSX. And here I can just use document, get element by whatever. Uh, I think it's container. All right. Yeah, and problem solved. 
So as so you can see here, right now, I've got the div, my application root, and I've got this div, the container, and the horse is rendering outside of the application container. All right? Nice, straightforward, like a lot of things in React. Great feature, powerful, easy to use. Let's take it a step forward. Let's create some state for this, uh, for this component. So let's say that show horse equals to false. And let's create a toggle horse. This is state, something like this. Um, show horse will be this state, show horse, and right here in the city, I'm going to create a button, all right, everyone can see the code, all right, cool, so I've got a button, uh, I'm not going to to uh, catch the click event on the bottom, I'm going to let it bubble. So I'm going to um, catch the click event on his parent. So on click, yeah, Visual Studio Code. But it's Visual Studio Code uh, Memorial Day. It's not that funny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm suffering. This toggle horse, all right? Let's see if it works. Yeah, I can click it and it's clickable, but it's not doing nothing. This state, uh, show horse, and our portal, all right? Great, as expected. Uh, in other words, um, let's see if I can use uh, the same bubbling technique, even if I'm rendering this element outside of the hierarchy. So I'm going to create a button inside my horse. That sounds very wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I should think about another example. So now I've got a horse with a button, and I'm going to wrap it with a fragment. All right? And here I've got this button again, horse, and I'm expecting to catch the event again on my parent component. So let's give it a try, horse here, horse there, and it works, which means that uh, even if you're rendering your component outside the hierarchy, uh, the portal feature is acting like, um, like a simple DOM element, like you expected. So we've got event babbling as well. Now I've got a problem with this because of two reasons. One. I'm a terrible person. I always have troubles with stuff. And the second, I've got this div hard-coded on my index.html, which I don't like. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go back to my index.html and remove this container. Instead, we're going to use this button. Let's start by taking this fragment, this horse, and create another component. So I'm going to create a stateful component for a reason. X and component, let's render and just return this fragment. If I go back here, let's take this method, take it away from here, here I can render the horse, return the fragment, all right, and expecting that, um, Return, return React, there is no container, <laughs> makes sense, all right? I've got no container, let's, let's bring the container just for a second again, just to make a point. Container, all right? So everything worked just like before, event bubbling and everything, uh, but now we've got this on a separate component. And as I said, I don't like this hard-coded div. So I'm going to remove it again. And this time, use the following pattern. Go to app.js, 
going to create a constructor by the book. I'm going to use super because I'm going to use this. And let's say that this container equals to document create element. Just create a div. And then I'm going to use the document body append child and render this container. So now instead of this, I can do this container. All right, make sense? We created an element on the fly when I want to render this component, creating an element, rendering a portal, and everything works just like before. But now we've got another issue because we're creating a div, and each time I will render this component, I will create another div. So let's thing to uh, clean up this pattern is use a uh, um, um, component will unmount. And here, I can use document, body, remove child, passing my container. And this time, as you can see on your right side, each time I'm toggling the horse, I'm destroying the element. All right? So let's take a look at this code. This is a React portal. Easy to use, works, works and behave as expected, uh, powerful. You can use it anytime you need to render something outside of the hierarchy um, tree. All right? Cool. So let's summarize. This was the horse in the city. Uh, you can get the code on GitHub if you like, and uh, the poster, so you can print it and save it. All right? Uh, to summarize everything, uh, who knows who is this? Who is this person? Who knows him? No one? Me either. You can check out. Uh, you can check out uh, my new book, VS Code. Why are you doing it? This to yourself. It's a bestseller. I didn't publish it yet. No, seriously, I've got nothing ser serious to say because uh, the one thing that I really like in React that we got some great features, easy to use, straightforward, straight documentation. This is the most important tip for portals, for the new context, for, for error boundaries, for everything. Use it when you need it. Don't overuse it everywhere. If you have some questions, I will happy to answer. If not, let's say thank you. For your, uh, for your last slide there, use portals, don't overuse portals. What's yes. your uh, decision-making process whenever you're uh, designing? What's, what's the situation that, that makes or breaks whether or not you're going to use a certain feature or portals specifically? Uh, portals specifically. Uh, I, th uh, I think that the example is really talks for, for itself. I mean, each time you've got, like, let's say, a modal that you want to render in the center of the screen, uh, if you've got a tooltip that you want to, you want to protect it from, uh, from, uh, from a parent that has some uh, uh, overflow hidden, for example, if you've got some kind of notification that you want to, to, uh, to position uh, by the window. So those are very common scenarios. And for the rest of them, just don't use it. Because it's a, <laughs> that, yep. The one issue with portals I've had is applying CSS styles. Plain CSS styles, right? Children's styles like class A, space class B, mm -hmm. class C. But when you do a portal, it sees rendered outside. All right. It doesn't need A and B. Do you have any like the common solution is just? If, if I get you right, you're talking about uh, CSS scope. If I'm rendering, if I'm breaking the structure, how it will be, I'll be how my CSS will be affected. Yeah, that's your question. Yes. Personally, I use uh, CSS in JavaScript. So if I've got uh, some kind of of a component like this that I want to, I want to protect my styling, I will put most of the CSS inside the component. And again, it's very similar to to the previous question. Uh, use this feature very carefully. If you're depending on global CSS and you're trying to, to trick stuff, you will break your design. Hopefully it's all right. And just like the context, uh, React Portals doesn't replace Redux. Right. <laughs> if, if, if that's what's your question. <laughs>
So you use, in order to create a new component, uh, you put it inside of the constructor, and actually for that you create a state for components. Yeah, just for this I created uh, a state. Is the reason uh, why it's better to put it inside of the constructor instead like component will mount? The mount is not supported anymore. <laughs> Besides that, Beside that. Uh, the constructor is called by, by JavaScript, by the language, right? And, and the, the lifecycle method is called by React. Uh, in both cases, it will work. I prefer to put it inside the constructor when my, when my object is instantiated. But it will work in both cases, right? There is no... Component did mount, though. Yeah, did mount. All right. <laughs> Thanks for the questions. Thank you very much. Thanks for the